Hello and welcome to BOI Weekly. I'm Kayode Alayode. Poultry production in Nigeria contributes up to 454 billion tons of meat and 3.8 million eggs per year, with a standing population of 180 million birds. Of this number of poultry birds, 80 million chickens are raised in extensive systems, 60 million of them in semi-intensive systems, while the remaining 40 million are raised under intensive systems. Yet, as we speak, poultry farmers in that country are struggling to meet the huge egg consumption demand across the country. This suggests that incredible business opportunities abound in the poultry industry. That's why the Bank of Industry continues to increase its intervention in that subsector year on year. Two poultry businesses supported by BOI are under our radar today on the show. AP Farms is an integrated poultry farm located in a small village east of Enugu State. The chief promoter, Mr. Chidioda, says BOI's low interest rate is incomparable to those of commercial banks, which makes doing business incredibly easy. And for this reason, he is determined to go back for more. We'll also show you how the Bank of Industries' 5 million naira intervention turned things around for a young poultry farmer in Karu local government area of Nasara State. With support from BOI, he was able to stock up several thousands of layer birds and enough feed to last them a life cycle. We'll bring you details and more if you stay tuned. An estimated 62.1 million metric tons of eggs were produced by approximately 6.4 billion chickens across the world in 2009 alone. Even though that number has since increased astronomically, poultry meat still accounts for 30% of global meat consumption. Today, Nigeria produces roughly 180 million birds every year, many thanks to micro, small and medium integrated poultry farmers spread all over the country who are making sure at least 4 million eggs make it to our kitchen tables every year. AP Farms, an integrated poultry farm located in a small village in Enugu State, is one of them. Aside from raising no fewer than 22,000 laying birds here, services in the company include livestock production and processing, sale of agro-allied products as well as farm consultancy and training. We need to work uh, or look at our agriculture from a point where uh, all the, um, the value chains are incorporated together to achieve a goal. For example, in poultry business. If, when you say agriculture is the key, yes, it's the key. When you encourage a lot of people to come into poultry, yes, a lot of people are going to come into poultry. But what happens when a lot of egg is produced and cannot be consumed by uh, 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 the immediate um, populace because it's perishable? That's where processing comes in. So that's why, that's why we're talking about uh, 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 the value chain, where you, are, where you make sure that the guys in the feed industry gives us the best where uh, we are the poultry farmers that once the eggs are produced, they are going to be consumed. And if they are not consumed immediately because of their perishable nature, they are going to be processed and conserved. But what we do in this country, um, in this country is, uh, this one is the in thing now. Everybody rushes in without a master plan, without a future. Do you understand? Like processing. And when all of us produce it now, like the case of tomato, and nobody is going to uh, uh, yeah. uh, consume it, the price drops and the farmer begins to suffer. Clearly, the huge gap between the current national poultry production creates huge opportunities for players in the industry. You need metal to survive in the Nigeria poultry business. Passion is the key in everything you do in life. I think if I hadn't the passion for this, maybe I would have assisted this business a very long time ago. But for the fact that I love the birds, and this is what I love to do, I go the extra mile to make sure it's on set. Money is important because poultry in Nigeria is not a small business. It's also capital intensive. 
To get the cages, uh, what millions of naira? But you have to start somewhere. But it's with the passion that you now go for knowledge. The passion drives you to learn about the business, to know what to do about the business, to link yourself or acquaint yourself with the people that have already gone before you to do the business. Then you talk about the money. Uh, we have white decker here, about 5,000. And uh, here is brown pullets, uh, about uh, 8,000 in this pen. And I have about another uh, 2,000 in the other pen, uh, making a total of uh, 15,000. But that's not our install, uh, full installed capacity. Our installed capacity on cage is 22,000. Then we have uh, for resin, the resin pen, about 5,000. So when you bring it all together, you're looking at 27,000. One of the biggest challenges you have down here, uh, number one is finance, even though we've gotten from Bank of Industry, but it's not enough because you have a lot of ideas and a lot of things you want to do, but you're constrained by finance. Apart from finance, which I think they should look into, we talk about uh, uh, training. I mean, if you don't train people, there's no way you can get them to do a job very well. Like the challenges we have in my farm, for example, is the, no, the number of uh, months or weeks it takes us to train our workers. Sometimes you finish training these guys and they disappear. But that doesn't stop us. A lot of them come seeking for jobs because they want temporary uh, 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 finance. Once they get like two, three, four months, they disappear. So, but that hasn't stopped us from training our staff because we understand that our success lies in them knowing what to do and why they are doing what they are doing. So training is also important. Then infrastructure. Believe me, the greatest challenge I have is power. Mm. If I had power, there's a lot I can do. But with, with power constraint, I run diesel almost on daily basis to pump water. It doesn't make sense. It's sitting down on my profit. Even though Mr. Chidi Odo entered the industry as a self-starter, at some point he realized the journey was too far and too tough to go alone without partners like the Bank of Industry. Uh, Bank of Industry came up with a program, uh, YESP program, Youth Entrepreneurship Scheme program for youth uh, in various uh, 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 businesses to encourage entrepreneurship. So when I heard about it, I applied online, was accepted, and they trained us for six months online with a Kenyan company, AM AMI, uh, on general business uh, techniques. Uh, business models, business plan and stuff like that just to get you ready for the business and after that we are asked to come up with a business plan and a uh, proposal for uh, a loan of um, one, in, uh, one, in, uh, one digit interest rate uh, which I did and by September last year I think I was almost through with the applications then they did their own pro, um, uh, processes and so on and by March I was funded. But what kind of support did he get at BOI and how would he describe the whole experience? What we asked for was the cap. The reason for that is my people used to say that if the road is good, you go it twice. Because that was the maximum we can get, we took it. Because we want to build a good relationship with Bank of Industry. In the future, there are other projects that we want to do, like the egg processing plants, like expanding our business like full-time um, um, feed milling, which you hope um, if we, with what we are doing with them now in the future, we should be able to assess a reasonable amount of fund to be able to do that. So basically what we took was their calf and they accepted us so far, uh, but we're looking forward to a greater uh, uh, partnership with them in the future. It's not surprising at all to find people who are still skeptical about the authenticity of the Bank of Industry's investment in the poultry subsector, much less the impact of the bank's effort. AP Farms is a shining example. That's their own opinion and that's their thinking. As a man thinks, so is he. If you put a cap in your face, it loses how far you're going to see. I think it's about determination and personal decision to do something. Because we've been in this business for quite some time, we already know where, if we get fund, where we're going to put it in. That I know that this time we'll start having good um, returns that we'll be able to pay back 
and also sustain the business. But the problem is this, is information. I keep saying it. The training we have in school is not enough, especially for the young people. It's not enough. I think it's high time we start moving from conventional uh, 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 education to vocational education, where people will learn their jobs, where we do more about technical, um, technical jobs than theoretical uh, uh, education. What I'm saying that is this. I don't think fun is ever a problem. It's you having passion for what you do. It's, it's because it's when you have passion for what you do that you can sit down and learn how to put it down in a paper in form of a business plan. Then if you present your business plan to Bank of Industry, for example, and after going through it and they feel is viable, why wouldn't they finance it? Well, I have a lot of guys that said that gave up halfway, but here I am today. I uh, says the phone, I'm building a good future and a good relationship with them. And I know with what we've done so far, the sky is my limit. Anybody can assess this phone, but do you have the patience? It's not a free money. It's not something you just sign this paper, sign this paper, and they give you. They have to make sure that it's sustainable, that you can be able to pay back this money before you get it. And you can only demonstrate that when you are sure of what you are doing and how viable your business is and how committed you are in that business. That's the only way you can get this fund. So, for sure, yes, I got one from Bank of Industry and I'm happy for it. And in fact, it's actually opening doors for me for future businesses with them. Because of the relationship I have had with them, I think the one I've taken, I've been paying smoothly and uh, we've been having some talks on how to maybe improve on what I got. Having seen my business and gone through my record, Having seen that, yes, we are in business for it and we're not using it for any other thing apart from the business that is designated for, I'll be asking for maybe 20, maybe 30, or more than that in the future. Because my mission is simple. You pay it off, you've created a record for yourself, then you can ask for more. You can expand your business. They become partners in your business. And the good thing about their loan is one digit. And the one that trying to introduce to me now is about 6%, which if I get, will make a lot of things easier for me. Nigeria consumes over 1.2 trillion naira worth of chickens every year. But surprisingly, we only produce 220 billion naira worth of that sum locally. When you do the math, you realize that we leave a whopping 980 billion naira to importers of poultry meat. Without gain sane, that falls way short of our collective potential in livestock production. The Bank of Industry knows just how important and urgent it is for Nigeria to close that market gap. That's why it grabs every opportunity to support willing investors in the sector. To this end, the Bank of Industry has supported thousands of poultry farmers across the country. One of such is TFK Farms, located in Karu, local government area of Nasarawa State. Basically what we do here is, um, the capacity of this farm is 7,000. That pen you're seeing there is 5,000, the other one here is 2,000. So we grow them here, we, we brood on the other farm, bring them here into growing stage, transfer them into their laying cages. This pen is around um, 100 square meter. And then for growing stage, what we do basically is um, the calculation is um, 10 breadth per square meter. So this should be an, an, an average of um, 1,000, Please come and give them food. There is no food in their feeder. Two pens contain like two thousand five, and, the, and the, that's the minimum we have here. And then the other two pens to contain another two thousand five. So by the time we transfer them into this main main pen, we have five thousand. These guys here already they are like two thousand. So the cost of this pen is seven thousand right now. If 
you look at these feeders, there are some that are empty. There are some that has a lot of feed in it. So what we do is we watch him do it. Come this way. Watch him do it. We don't have to put our hands, pick up the feet that are much in some particular place and spread it around for everybody to have even feet. Spread this feet for me, please. You see them start eating right now. Spread that feet for me. I also understand that it, it brings up the aroma. Yes, yes. It's, it's, it's like you giving you stale feet. It's 20, 2016 when the ESP program came out. So, um, my partner, which is my wife, she applied. And then I think she went to, she succeed, she went to the first stage, second stage, and then the third stage. So, we were able to get the loan, and it's been helpful. We use the phone in um, the pictures of day old and feet from day old up to the point of lay. When I mean point of lay, up to the point where the, where the chickens start feeding themselves. Meaning, up to the point where when we sell our eggs, we could be able to buy some feed to feed the birds back and put some money in our pockets. Getting a loan from back of industry is one of the best things that happened to us because it wasn't easy at first. Um, at first, we approached one of the commercial banks that we need um, a soft loan because when we look at our turnover, it was very high. Okay, can, you, can you give us a soft loan for say a year on this? And then um, they were charging us a lot of money. They, was, they were asking us to bring um, security, which we don't have. Um, this land that you're seeing is not CFO, it's RFO. They said they, they, they're not going to take it. So when the ESP program came, came up, uh, we had to approach the Bank of Industry with it and they gave us the loan on a single digit with no collateral, no security deposit. So it's, it's been wonderful what the Bank of Industry did, 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 did for us. The structure of the loan is three years with six months moratorium. So when they give us a loan, we we're given six months to pay back just the interest, after which we start paying part of the capital expenditure. Whether we'll go back or not, we've gone back. <laughs> and um, what they said was that we need to, we need to pay this to, to a certain level and they'll be sure that okay, um, the exposure to all is not in our favor but on both parties' favor. And like I told you, we're not make, meeting the target. Right now, the egg we produce today have already been paid for. We need to produce more eggs. I want to say thank you, Bank of Industry, for giving us this opportunity. We won't disappoint you and we should, we should do more business with you in the future. Sulia Tibrahim is the project officer with the Bank of Industry managing TFK farms. She is required to carry out routine visits to the farm to engage the clients with a view to ensuring they operate profitably. The major risk we have in this business is mortality, mortality, Mortality. So as long as the theft don't die, die yes, you, you're in business. Theft is very, very minimal. It's, it's not like cattle where you, you pick a cow and you sell for a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. Who comes in here to pick to, to steal one or two chickens? But we have securities that take care of that. So, so as long as the beds don't, don't die. Suliat later told me that TFK Farms has a good track record in terms of quality and they run a sustainable model which strategically positions them to do well in the egg and meat production industry. The business has already been established. We could see and they had evidence and track record. We could see this through their, I mean, um, their business plan, the model they were operating and evidentially also through their um, cash flow. So when we went through their statements, we could see that they had started from, I mean, turning 1,000 into more than one and then finally expanding. So when they came to us with the expansion plan, it was only logical to actually do it. CFK Farms benefited under the Youth Entrepreneurship Summit Program, popularly called the SP. It's a program that was designed by the bank for youth ages 18 to 35. And the beauty of the program was they actually designed it to be all encompassing in terms of capacity building, training, and eventually funding whatever business plan they would come out with at the end of the program. 
The beautiful thing about ESP is also the interest rate and also the security arrangement. It was because of the demographic and then the challenges surrounding starting a business at a scale, at a micro and small scale. The bank designed the product that would address most of their um, um, most of their questions, such as oh we don't have property as a collateral, so we designed a different security arrangement. Some of them oh we don't want to take interest. I mean double digit is quite high on any business. Talk more of a starting business, so it's a single digit loan. Also moratorium period is a bit flexible for them, and then the tenure. For, I mean you have tenures ranging between three to five years, up about thirty six to 50, um, sixty months which is quite good for any business starting out, which is really good. So for them, it was good that they had a good interest rate. They had flexible uh, moratorium period. They also had a longer tenure compared to other small businesses. And they had the training, which was very, um, which helped most of them because, you know, ideas are good, ideas come in every other time. But it's one thing, one thing to have the idea, and another thing to have um, the, the methodology to actually implement this thing, which the ESP did address by putting them under um, online training, giving them um, text materials, and then eventually funding business ideas that actually survived all of this um, training. In the product design, we look at different um, different areas, and one of the areas we must have looked at in designing the ESP is how much you can actually give a startup without you know overfunding. And then there was a cap at five million. We believe that with five million, any business idea can actually I mean grow can actually start and then grow progressively before accessing more funds, especially as um, a credit finance. So BOI, under the ESP program, the maximum you can access um, in single bigger is um, 5 million. And that was, I think TRK benefited about 4.5 million for this particular um, expansion fund. I'm quite impressed because I mean this is like a baby project for me. I started this in 2016, going through like their business ideas, reviewing some of them, you know, pointing out some directions, seeing the records, and then finally um, presenting it, getting the approval, and disbursing it, and then coming back at a later date and seeing how far they've gone, the number of eggs that they've been produced. I mean, the birds were quite welcoming when we came in here, and then the fact that they also, because of the loan and how they've seen their potentials and ability to expand. They're willing to take you from where they are right now to a bigger space. So um, it's it's a happy I mean it's a happy place for me coming here and seeing what they've done. And I'm very sure that given the capacity that they've exhibited and the funds that they have at their disposal, and then the market available for them because it's food really. They can do more, and they will definitely do more. If you're into food processing or any sort of agribusiness and you'd like to expand your business or increase production capacity, remember the Bank of Industry is your go-to development finance institution. Contact BOI today by calling at any of their branches closest to you and they are spread all over the country. You can also visit their website at boi.ng. With the Bank of Industry, you can apply for loans online. For further inquiries, tweet at me at K-A-Y Alliande or at the Bank of Industry at BOI Nigeria. That will be our show for today. Many thanks for watching. I'm Kaede Alliande. Bye now.